Kelly Patterson, good afternoon. Bocage 321, good afternoon, sir. Brandon Hurst, the big blish is here. Daniel Meredith is here. SoCal Sandman is here. Josh Bulldog is here. Scott Kuhn is here. Should I switch mics? Okay, I think we, I think we got the, <laughs> I think we got the sound corrected here. The lettuce king is in the house. Lettuce king. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Dave. You still suck, he says. Wow. So what's going on? This is just a Q and A today. I thought we'd sit around and shoot the breeze. It's just kind of a, kind of a, a good day for doing that. Uh, Scott Kuhn says the sound's fixed now. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Have you ever seen Trucker AK, Bocage 321? No, sir. No, I. that doesn't... He's a YouTube trucker? I have not seen him, no. Uh, trucker Forever. Hey, Dave. Hey, Trucker Forever. Glad you guys could all join us today. I. Uh, oh, I better stay away from that topic. Uh, SoCal, SoCal. I was going to say, did have you ever run into my buddy Richard there, that travels the same route as you do? I was thinking about thinking about him today. I owe him a phone call. I, did you ever manage to hook up with him? I th I think he's I think he's still running that same route. So you should be running across him, you know, once a week or so, once or twice a week. What's your, what's your opinion on using a stretch truck for a work truck? Well, it's it's okay if you've got three thousand miles between drops. God knows I've done it, but if if you're pedaling LTL in, every day in the city, I think there's easier ways to go. So yeah, I wouldn't rec recommend it for for hard city use every day. But you know, if you and it depends on the cities too. Like some of the some of the big cities like LA are well spread out, and you've got lots of room. You get into places like like old Boston or something like that. You'd be wishing you had a shorter wheel base. White Lion Transportation, howdy, howdy. Hello from Calgary, Murray Graham. Bullcash, what's my favorite old Mack truck? Oh, you know what, Josh? I meant to talk to you about, uh, to Josh about this too, but my, my favorite was the R model Mack, but I saw one of the brand new Macs the other day and was it ever a sharp looking truck i didn't get the model number off it i passed him on the highway but josh it was good looking truck gp transco good afternoon everyone a driver in orientation told us this morning that one of the canadian <laughs> one of the canadian trucker guy from youtube sent us that might be us, might be us. <laughs> hey gp welcome Th glad you could join us Yeah, GP Transco trucks, you can, they're, they're very distinctive. You can really spot those. I just saw um, SoCal commenting on that. And yeah, they're, they, they stand right out in a parking lot. I've even seen other YouTube trucker videos, and you can, you know, they'll be fanning the parking lot as to where they've landed. You can spot the GP Transco truck right off. So good, good um, scheme or color combination or whatever, whatever you want to call it. I always, I always like that, that, color that they use on the cabs there i forget the name of that, that deal teal. teal yeah i like i like that color thank you uh mac anthem or mac pinnacle josh I, I don't know one from the other so i couldn't tell you but it was it was brand new it was sharp looking and it had a kind of a, a vertical grill that was in the center third of of the hood facing forward so whichever truck that is but uh but <laughs> Lettuce King this says the Superliners are coolest. And I believe Lettuce King had a Superliner at one point. Is that not correct back in the day, Lettuce King? Canadian Fro Freight Broker. Can you explain how Canada is changing how owner-operators are not supposed to be exclusive to one carrier? Now, I didn't, I didn't realize to any extent that Canada was changing that way. My understanding to this day is that you either need to be leased to a carrier or you have to have your own operating authority. I don't think there's any any in between. Now down in the States it's a little bit different because some some carriers will allow their trucks to, to use load brokers to get home and such. 
but not so much up here yet that I'm aware of. But, you know, may, it may come. It may come. Huh. GP Transco says, took us almost a year of working with 3M to get the color right for our trailers. Well, the year was, was worth the time spent because they it all looks really good when it's hooked up. Lettuce King says he he did have a super liner. So Josh, Josh Bulldog, the Lettuce King is a former Mac owner. So that should that should make you feel pretty damn good. Uh Bokesh, if I had a cab over, what would I have? I'd have I either the Kenworth K100 flat top dub, double bunk. I didn't like the BJ and the bear truck so much. I like the the flat top double bunk or either the the 352 or the 362 Pete. I'd have a hard time choosing between all uh, one of the three of those, but probably the Kenworth, but it it'd be a tough call. Oscar, Dave, is a two-month gap on a resume look bad in trucking the trucking industry? These days, I don't think particularly anyone's going to going to notice it, Oscar, if they ask you about it, just, you know, tell them the truth. Say, yep, I, I was off sick for a couple of months or whatever the deal was. But just, just tell them the truth or that you were, you were searching for a company that you'd be happy with and it took you a while to find one. And then finally you chose them. That should put a smile on their face. So, no, I don't, I don't think that's going to hurt you these days. Oh, this is, um, Bocas says, this trucker AK used to be a container guy, then Landstar, and now a reefer company. Hmm. I'll, uh, Bocas, I'll, I'll have a look for him. Captain Nice Guy, I just passed a GP Transco truck a couple hours ago. Their trucks are sharp looking. Yeah, they are. And they really stand out. They really stand out. That's what I like about them. When you've seen one, you know you've seen one. You don't forget it quickly, which is kind of the point when you're using them for advertising. Hey, there's Trucker Harold. Yes, it has been a little while. We've missed you, man. Where have you been? Thunderstorm 87. I'm saving up money for the new Nikola cab over. You know what? I like the look of that truck. I, I like the look of the Nikola. Um, the other one, too, the, the setback axle truck with the hood. I thought that was a sharp-looking truck. So uh, hopefully they'll come to fruition. They're both good-looking trucks. GP Transco. Two months are really not a big deal for us, nor for any other carrier that we have spoken with. When you get into one, two, and three years, that's when there could be issues. And I, I think GP's talking about having to, having to wait for trucks. So, yeah. If, I, I gather the pace from the plants. Josh was asking about this earlier. I gather the pace is, is starting to pick up. And I remember uh, GP Transco telling me a week or two ago that they'd received a couple of the new trucks that they'd ordered. So they're starting to filter in, which is... Which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. Was that not about the gap in experience and resume? Yeah. Mm. Gap in experience. Oh, oh, oh. Nick's pointing out to me that that, that gap is mm -hmm. um, in, in experience is what he's talking. Oh, sorry about that. I misinterpreted the communique. Let us king. Uh, my truck is only about 450 horsepower, 3406 cat, around 1,400 foot-pounds of tor torque. Not turned up too much. I, you know, are you are you going to turn that thing up, uh, Lettuce King? Because because some of your trucks in the days past have been awesome, awesome. And there's something else I want to ask you while we got you, Lettuce King. Is how many 359s have you rebuilt and worked on? Do you know the top off the top of your head? Yeah, lots of them. Dave, how's the American Truck Simulator going? Not too well so far, Sean. It's a it's a thorn it it's a thorn it. It's a thorn in my side or a hornet in my bonnet, but it's it's still a work in progress. I think how Nick feels. Think, yeah, I think how Nick feels, yeah. He can't believe he's gotta deal with someone so incompetent. Uh, what was I reading the other day? I saw I saw Snyder's starting to Fire dr truck drivers for being YouTube truck drivers. Yeah. 
Snyder's starting to let those guys go. <laughs> and they've got, you know, they've got a point. It's it's distracted driving to a point. If you know, if they're messing with the cameras and stuff, I can I can see their point. Uh, Co- Cody Schmidt, do you know GP policy for DUI minus four years old? I don't. But they're here, and, and he may answer that. By the way, Lettuce King, uh, I notice that a lot of guys now are going to the five and the four when they're building trucks. Is that because they can't can't find the six and the fours anymore? But five and fours are still quite popular. Uh, Tim Field, hey Tim, how are you, man? Greetings from Croatia. Wow. Love roll. Wow. That's a hike. <laughs> GP Tranko says they would pay good money to watch Smart Trucking play American Truck Simulator with a GP Transco. With a GP Transco truck. Our trucks are available on ATS. I think... I think before I attempt that, I better make sure I'm not running into stuff there, GP. That might take me a little while. Appreciate the thought. Grilled Mortals here. Nothing like an old Kenworth that has an aluminum T-block for airlines mounted on the axle of brakes. Then the airlines wear through in the dark of the night. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be exciting. I had... Um, Grilled Mortal, you'll remember the days when they had a crossover fuel line underneath the fuel tanks, and they were held up by a, a cross member. And I, I whacked something with that that crossover bar, and dropped the and dropped the crossover line. And that was that was back in the days before they worried about worried about the environment. But I, I lost, I bet you I lost twenty gallons before I noticed the gauge dropping. And that was, of course, it happens at night in the bad weather in the middle of the nowhere. So, but I remember that. Captain Nice Guy coming in with the twenty bomb. Thank you very much for that, my friend. I have a fun question for both Dave and the Lettuce King, which the Lettuce King has already answered. What is your all-time favorite vehicle to drive that is not a truck? The Lettuce King has answered with his new challenger so i guess the ball would be in your court on no, dave well i am surprised because i thought for sure he'd pick his torino but yeah i it's broken. Uh, you know i don't drive a whole lot of vehicles anymore we we get a tahoe a, a new tahoe every few years and i quite enjoy driving those i was i thought seriously about getting a getting one of the challengers when they came out but i thought you know i'd probably lose my license in the thing and that kind of kind of cured me on part of that that and the fact that you know then i'd have an extra vehicle and what would i do with that but his bicycle yeah i, I yeah i do have a bicycle bike. i do i do and i'm the only one that's ridden it oh for two minutes <laughs> no I, I took it I took it to the marine and back. His scooter, electric scooter. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Marie Coleman coming in with the $10 as well. Thank you very much for that. I know I had asked about pilot cars last time, and you didn't know much about others um, who have uh, do a deal with them. Uh, what other careers with trucking do you suggest uh, that are good to get into? Lisa Marie, if you're talking about actual truck driving careers... I really enjoyed uh, tanker work. I, I did. I didn't. I didn't enjoy hauling the gas and the diesel too much. But I really liked the, really liked the straight bore, chemical and food grade tanker work. I, I I quite enjoyed that. I'd recommend that with a with a good carrier. And you know, if I'm going to do a now, do a I plug, believe she's specifying with pilot cars specifically. If I'm reading that correct, you'll probably have to reread the question to confirm that's. Accurate. I don't know if that makes a difference towards the answer at all, but yeah. But do you know others who have do deals with them, like pilot cars? You know, if if that's the question, Lisa Marie, have you ever seen those guys that pull great big boats and yachts around on the interstates? I think 
I think that would be good work and not nearly as bad as, as some of the other oversized stuff that you see out there. It's not as ugly. It's usually, you know, a little wider and a little higher, but nothing extreme. That might be interesting work, being a pilot car for, for one of those guys that hauls yachts or uh, boats. To, to specify support in the trucking industry. A port. Support, support in the trucking industry. The trucking industry. If that helps clarify your answer at all. Well, there's always, there's always, I don't know if I'd want to work in the office or not. Anyway, go work for a safety, safety consulting firm. White Lion Transportation coming in with the Wild 50 bomb out of nowhere here. Thank you very much for that. A generous, generous donation. We really appreciate that, White Lion. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, White Lion. Grilled Mortal says he saw a guy run over a tarp on the 401 and rip his cross over line off. Yeah, they, you know what, they... Well, Grilled Mortal, you'll, you'll know this. A lot of you guys will know this. But they did away with that crossover line underneath the fuel tanks. And the new the new suck and draw system, I don't think is nearly as good. I've had, I've had trouble with mine on a few occasions. I know it's probably more environmentally safe, but I miss the old crossover lines. And, you know, if you had a problem, they, the good trucks would have taps on either tank at the bottom. You could shut it off. But, yeah, this, this new draw system... I don't care for it nearly as much. Did I ever see a split rim fail? Yes, I have. In fact, John M., I, I had that happen on on one of my trucks. And I did it. I, I can still tell you where I was. I was on a, on a back road, and they were repaving the surface, and the construction crew had left for the day, and they left a lip between the old pavement and the new pavement that must have been... Man, it felt like six inches. It was probably more like four. But I split a steering axle rim just just hitting that bump, not knowing it was coming up, not expecting it to be that bad. And uh, I, I split the rim and, and lost the tire, like, right there. And that was that was an expensive venture. Wasn't my fault. Never did find out who the paving company was. But, yeah, yes, I have. White Lion Transportation wants to know, what do you think of Landstar and the 35% they take from owner-operator compared uh, to <laughs> own authority? I, I think I think Landstar has a license to print money. It it, it Basically, you're paying that 35% to use their insurance, their authority, and and a list of load brokers that's available to everybody. I guess I guess an advantage would be that I don't need I don't even know for sure if this is how it works. But if it's a load broker that you find through Landstar off their system, that Landstar pays you rather than the load broker pays you, I'm not sure how that works. I think, I think that's a ridiculous amount of money, considering what you can do to get your own authority and insurance. And and load brokers, crazy, you can throw a rock in any direction anymore and hit a load broker. So there's no there's no big secret finding those guys anymore. I I think 35 percent is outrageous, but. You know, their their job is to make themselves rich, and they're they're doing it, man. They've been around a long time. They've got a successful system. They've got a ton of access to freight. It's hard to argue with their success. Here's Lisa Marie. I discovered a pilot car pilot car careers recently, and it's still driving, but without the hauling. Being the safety person for truckers really appeals to me still traveling and still part of the trucking industry and you know what it's that's the safety stuff is a common sense part of the industry and it it it's amazing how many new drivers need common sense pointed out to them i i think it's an area of trucking that that is going to need to flourish in the upcoming years because we still have all these new drivers but they're not being taught the skills that they need The Trucker Herald, stay away from mega carriers. Go with a small local company. Better pay, better respect. Hey, Dave, is a front tandem, rear tandem, or spread axle better for a while? You're talking trailers. You know, a tight tandem is good if you got to do a lot of spinning around and jacking. For scaling, I really preferred the spread just because you could, no bad, some docks you're not even allowed on to. And you could, you could, 
the guy could completely screw up how you how you loaded the truck but you could still compensate for that with a spread axle uh, and a long wheelbase truck and i the last few trailers i owned were sliding spreads so you could open or close them as as you saw fit very versatile combination and i was always able to get legal no matter how poorly they put the load on the trailer socal i oh i didn't know you worked at landstar socal said he was there three and a half years there but there's socal you'd know better than me but there's a lot of guys that that literally do their entire career there are there not like if it were me i'd have gone with um with uh, the guys you're with now all day long rather than stay at landstar i can i agree with your move but some guys spend years there huh there's a good question gp transco says do they include the cost of the trailer in the 35 percent good question And SoCal says yes. So there, that makes the that makes the thirty five percent a little less serious, but still, you know, trailers aren't expensive to buy. I I don't know. There, Landstar is geared to make money for Landstar, and there's absolutely no doubt that they're doing that. So you know, you just got to bear that in mind if you're willing to to sacrifice that thirty five percent or not. For something that should be worth ten percent. <laughs> anyway, Renee, favorite Dave quote: "Driving slower than the flow of traffic has saved me from hundreds of wrecks." It will, and I got man, I got an email from a guy just today named Brandon Steele, and he was good guy complaining about how how people tailgate why that's still a problem and he's completely right and you see it all the time why 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 do people especially truck drivers tailgate that that's crazy one of the worst habits you can have <laughs> space robert browning space not speed right on and i never did understand what the big hurry was and you know they say they like to say that part of the hurry is because now they're trying to keep up with the e-log so they don't run out of time on the interstate or something like that but that's that's just a poor excuse i would i rather than drive like a rape date through traffic i would just run over on the e-log and suffer the consequences I, w I would never you know try to shove my way through a traffic jam just to get to my favorite truck stop in time. That's crazy. Tanks, tankers are paying up to 120 k a year if you have hazmat and tanker endorsements, trucker, trucker Herald. I always made good money pulling tanks, and I liked, I liked the work, too. And I got good fuel mileage pulling tanks. So, yep, no, I, I, I enjoyed that. Hey, uh, Tim Field says they, they tailgate because they're so impatient. The faster you go, not uh, the money you make is all they care about. Yeah, they're uh, there's no need. There's no need ever to get in a rush with a semi. That's just, a, that's just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> Bo Cass asks if I think Swift should have a tanker division. Probably, probably not. Good question. Yeah, that'd probably be. Oh, you know, but we used to laugh at Sh about Schneider. Schneider has a tanker division. They have very few wrecks. They've been very successful with it. And and Schneider used to be what Swift is today at one point, but they've they've really cleaned up their act. But no, I don't think I'd recommend tankers for Swift. Uh, here's one for everyone, Captain Nice Guy. ELDs or paper log books? That's a that's a damn good question. And you know what? I'm I didn't find the ELDs that bad. You just had to had to work with them and work accordingly. You you know, there were there were times when I would just, you know, completely ignore it because I had to move the truck from the fuel island to the shop for an oil change or something like that. And I I'd be damned if I'll do the slow creep across the parking lot. But for the most part I found them pretty I found I was more relaxed because there was just no way I could make a destination that was 900 miles away, one that I used to do, 
in my younger years. Now it was just it was just out of the question. So you could just kind of kick back and enjoy the ride, and you felt more relaxed at the end of the day. So tough call. Like the the ELDs are the answer. They just have to make them more uh, more fluid, more forgiving, more flexible. But the, I, I still think the ELDs are the answer. Now the legislation is the problem. The reason for very little wrecks in uh, Schneider's Tankers Division is because very few trucks in Texas, <laughs> very few trucks in Texas hauling crude oil. <laughs> uh, that could be. I gather. Jesus, we we've got one brutal video of a tanker in Texas. It's just just unbelievable. Schneider used to be a Teamster company. I think they still have a small division that is still union. I did not, David Ellison, I did not know that. I did not know that. Sean McGuire, can you guys go one stream without bashing my company, Swift? <laughs> Sean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every, yeah, and everybody else is sorry too. It's, let me qualify this. It's not that every driver at Swift is bad or something like that. It's not that way at all. All carriers, all carriers have good drivers and bad drivers. It just seems to me, though, lately that the training threshold for the Swift guys the last couple of years has been far below standard because it's generally those guys you see in trouble. And, they've God, they've dedicated a, a YouTube channel to it. I, th I think they need to up their training game. And I don't blame the drivers for that. I blame the carrier for that. And and certainly their you know their scores improved, or well, when when they amalgamated with Knight because Knight had a higher uh, score than Swift. It was Swift, and it Swift actually dragged Knight's scores down for that. Uh, Brandon, bring back the ten eight five fifteen rule. Yeah, a lot of guys, a lot of guys still. Still prefer that. But, you know, you can... Oh, I'm back and forth on this. You can see why they did it. Now, mind you, a lot of that was influenced from, from the ATA, which, which I didn't agree with, but... Oh, here's Trucker Herald. Swift has a small drive-in division that's still union. I did not know that. But, uh, you know, I, th I thought... The motivation for having the ELD was correct because they were trying to reduce accidents. And I think with a certain percentage of the driver population, it probably would. But they, they needed to build in way more flexibility than, than what they have. Because it's, it's so easy to run out of hours at a, at a shipper of receivers. You guys all know that. And they should have an allotment for that type of thing. SoCal. <laughs> Turn on the CB, you'll hear Swift jokes day and night. <laughs> yep. Uh, I God, I remember being in a snowstorm one time, going through Effingham, Illinois, and it was snowing like a bugger. And there were, and and Effingham has um, oh, a FedEx yard right there in Effingham, and God, like five miles from their yard. There must have been three of them jackknifed in the ditch. And this woman had composed a, a, a song uh, to the tune of O Christmas Tree, O Christmas Tree. It was uh, only it was FedEx, O FedEx, why are you in the ditch so often? And I wish I could remember the song, but they went on for like three verses and it was hilarious. Uh, Ryan Voss says, I love the 13 hours driving in Canada when I ran furniture up there. You know, the 13 hours, Ryan, it can be good or bad for Canadian guys because there are days you just don't feel like you're up to doing 13 hours, especially if the weather's bad or something like that. But all the carriers up here will push you to do the maximum amount of legal hours that you can. And, and the guys up here have trouble going, no, you know what, I've had, I've had enough for today. It's been a long day. I just want to work 10 hours, and the carriers will fight them on it. It's, it's not right. Uh. Boca, what's wrong with New Jersey? Just wait, Bocas. I'll try to think of something that's right with New Jersey. It's... <laughs> well, I better not start insulting New Jersey. Somebody, several people have asked why you don't like driving in New Jersey. Oh, God. Where, where, where could I start? The narrow roads, the crime, 
the rough pavement, just the ugly neighborhoods, the tight, tight streets, the low bridges. How am I doing so far? It's it's like it's like going into New York City only closer. I just don't just don't like I know I know that there are parts of New Jersey New Jersey that are scenic as you roll by the chemical plants like um like oh god what's that huge one on the south end jersey but it's just not a pretty state they call it the garden state but i haven't seen the gardens ever <laughs> do dot officers really believe all truckers paper logs are 100 percent truthful no thunderstorm that's why they did away with them and, and got the elds but you know what when i put that eld in the in my truck I never had an argument from a DOT guy after that. He'd say, let me, you know, let me see your logbook. I'd point to the ELD. He'd, on your way, he'd say. He wouldn't even check it. And I like that. <laughs> but you might see Bruce Springsteen. You, you know, Kathy would be excited by that. I'm not a big Springsteen fan, but Kathy. It's not your fault. You have no taste in Kathy. Kathy says, not my fault. I have no taste in music. I, he only, he did Born to Run. I think that was the only song that I liked that he did. Oh, but. oh what? I'm going to kick you off the screen. She's going to kick me off the screen. Uh, any break of 120 minutes or grade, greater does not remove any from your 14-hour clock and resets your, your break code. I have waited 20 minutes just to let the two hours accumulate and reset. Yeah, they're a pain in the butt sometimes. Uh, Lisa Marie, Metro Denver is like that. Went to art school there, and driving a four wheeler was challenging. <laughs> I'll take I'll take Denver over uh, Jersey City anytime. Although Denver, yeah, I was the first time I went to Denver, I was kind of surprised how kind of beat up and run down it was. I was disappointed. <laughs> John says I don't have a long enough show to bust on New Jersey. We could we could go over overtime. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Sometimes the lettuce king and, and Kathy get into it. So here's a phrase that should set it off. Springsteen is a bleeding liberal. <laughs> wow. Uh, he's got more nerve than I do. Uh, Dave, did I like Red Simpson? Yeah, he. You know, he was he was like anybody else. He had some good stuff and some some stuff that I didn't think was so great. But yes, overall, I'd say that that I did. Uh, have I ever been to the Bad of Bing, Roger Penske? No, no, I haven't. I never stopped in Jersey if I could possibly avoid help it. You know, I just wanted to get in and get out. And and thankfully, I didn't go there very often. And and then after a while, I just quit going altogether. They couldn't pay me enough to go. Robert Browning, I'm old school. If I get in a fight with a dispatcher on the phone, I'd say, you better not be in the office when I get back. And they never were. <laughs> uh, I, I've been in that situation once or twice myself. Should I, should I admit it? Uh, Captain Nice Guy is literally a half hour out of Effingham. Ah, man. I used to, I used to stop at the Petro there regularly and i forget what they called that it's a flying j now but there used to be a shell there and i used to go in there there was a there was a wicked good aluminum polishing guy that worked at that shell in effingham he's he's long gone now i can't even think of his name but him and his sons man that guy was was good yeah kelly patterson says uh, my experience with the department of transportation went show them the eld and they just waved it all away yeah, they, you know, and, and, and David Ellison's right. They do make trucking so easy because you don't have to worry about the details. The truck just records when you stop, when you go. The DOT can't argue with the time, you know, over a period of space. It took too long or was too short. You were speeding or something like that. That's what the Iowa DOT used to do. They'd look at the distance you ran from point A to point B, look at the time, and then calculate how fast you must have been going. And give you a speeding ticket for that. And, of course, everyone's squeezing their logbook because they, they want to get farther, but that was back in the day. 
Tim Field, Dave, you should see Denver now. That's where that damn thing jump. Uh, going through the dispatch window, chasing around the lady that gave him the attitude. A guy, oh, a guy. The, the Lettuce King did that. The Lettuce King. Oh, oh, okay. It reminds me of the story of the Lettuce King jumped through the dispatch window. It, it was a guy that he chased around. It wasn't a woman. It was. <laughs> with, who was that? Was that Dean Auger? Lettuce King? I'm trying to remember who it was that you chased. I don't think it was. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Bo Cash, Lettuce King, have you ever beaten up a dispatcher or wanted to? He's wanted to plenty of times. I don't think he ever ever actually got the chance. Probably a good thing. Bobber, that uh, Lettuce King, Bobber, that's the, it was the Bobber truck stop in Effingham, the Shell. That's the name I was trying to think of. Uh, man. Trucky tried to do the same thing to me, Matthew. Yeah, anytime I was, I was crossing... Truckee, going into California. I always tried to do that in the wee small hours of the morning. I found them, maybe they were undermanned at that point, I don't know, but I found I could breeze through there, you know, being pretty close to the mark on all the axles at 2 a.m., and I'd do all right, but if I waited until sunrise, I often had trouble. I don't know if Truckee is still as, as tough as it used to be or not. What is the max legal wheelbase? I don't, I don't believe that there is a maximum because there's, there's guys out there uh, with 350 wheelbases and there's, you know, more than one of them. All those um, uh, reliable guys, I think they're all like 350 or over. I don't think there is a maximum. Shannon, I-80 is closed until tomorrow. Huh. One of my favorite highways and it's shut down. GP Transco, speaking of the Pilot Flying J, they asked if we can have a GP Transco truck for a nationwide commercial they're shooting coming early in March featuring one of our teal machines and a GP driver. Well, that's that's kind of a feather in your cap. That's, that's important stuff. Congratulations. I, I should ask you, GP, while, while we're on the subject here, I don't know what kind of fuel cards you guys run, but... Probably your trucks can all all fuel it, the pilots and flying J's. Huh, good. Congratulations. Very cool. Very cool, says SoCal. <laughs> Either of you guys ever put your faith in super single drives? Neither one of us. Ever. <laughs> I... I I'm I'm sure I I told the story about getting a getting a tire that that I blew out Southern Utah, and I rolled into a TA down there in Southern Utah in '15, and uh, the TA I was in the shop getting my tire fixed, and the guy had a whole rack of super single tires. This is this is a long time ago now, and then he had a whole rack of rims for the super singles, and we're in the middle of nowhere, and I thought that's kind of unusual. For a truck stop to stock that many, so I, I asked the the shop foreman. He said, "What's what's the deal with all the all the rims and tires for the super singles?" He says, "Man, that is the best thing that's ever happened to me." He says, "When these super singles blow, they drop and it chews the rim right there on the ground before the guy can either even stop the truck." He says, "So all of a sudden, I'm selling a tire, a rim, and a service call." He says, "I'm making a fortune off those super singles." I never even thought of that about the rim dropping, but of course it does because there's no side tire to support it. And I thought, wow. And uh, that helped form my opinion of the super singles, that and a few other things. But no, I, I'd never even consider running those. Did you ever take back roads to avoid way stations? No, maybe you shouldn't answer that. Um, can't say can't say <laughs> all the time well, ask about the lettuce king, which we did. oh <laughs> That's the lettuce king only saw the interstate between scales but oh i wish i wish we had a, a way to share those pictures that we have of in the future of michael davison i had a i had a friend that went around one of the ports the new mexico port 
and and roll the truck on a back road in the middle of nowhere in the, at night and it's it is right on its side and we've got photographs of that you should see it it's it's incredible i'll try to figure out how to post those pictures well nick will try to figure out how to post those pictures yeah what was my favorite lettuce king moment back in the day <laughs> i couldn't pick a favorite there were so many of them uh uh no i i i i'd have to there there were there were an awful lot of them hopping through the dispatch window was certainly one of my favorites and and standing next to the he and i worked for a carrier called future fast freight briefly and i was standing next to the shop foreman one time when he was looking at his line of trailers and he said to me i can't figure out how all these mud flaps keep getting lowered who is lowering these trailer mud flaps so they're dragging on the on the ground and i knew exactly who it was i had to spin around so he didn't see me grinning because it was the lettuce king lowering all the mud flaps so they drag <laughs> that was one of my favorites uh where are we here i'm getting behind captain nice guy I asked about the super singles because I was re reminded of the time a while back when we got a super single drive tire slashed just outside of Oakland, California. And there'd, there'd be no limping away from that, would there? You'd just, you'd just be there, particularly if the thing the trailer was loaded. Yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't see the advantage of them. I really don't. I know you save a little bit of weight, but then... I'd cut back the load before I'd switch to the super single tires. Those things are expensive. Raymond Dawson with the five beans. Thank you very much for the five, my friend. Thanks, Raymond. Appreciate it. Sch Schneider's is too salty for me. Too st that can't be right. Safety? Too safety conscious? Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> Shan. Shan is laughing about avoiding the scales. Uh, Kelly Patterson, you probably should plead the fifth. Yeah, that's what I should have done. We don't have that up in Canada, but I sure wish we did. Uh, I plead the fifth on going around the scales. Uh, <laughs> man, I, some of my favorite going around the scale stories though involve Michael Davison, who, who the Lettuce King knows is a, was a, is a friend of ours. And he, he got caught in some of the wildest messes going around the scales a couple of times. <laughs> he got, some farmer phoned him in from central Nebraska. He was going around North Platte. And some farmer phoned the cops in central Nebraska. He said, because Davison's truck was lit up like, like an apartment building on its side. Some, some farmer phoned in to say he had a, had a horizontal UFO going through his fields. And the cops come out to see it. It was... Davison sneaking around the scale with all his lights on. <laughs> John M., Dave, what action did you do with the Lettuce King that caused Lettuce King the most aggravation? Caused Kathy. Caused Kathy the most ag. <sighs> you know what? Uh, Kathy and the Lettuce King got into an argument about the color of trucks, what color the new truck should be, that went on for like six hours over the CB radio. Well, it, it really, the, the heat of it was six hours, but really it went on all the way to the coast and they were back and forth and back and forth. But I, I'll, I'll never forget that. I never, I never said a word in the two of them. It started out as fun and then they got serious and then they got heated. <laughs> was, and they were, they're both very strongly opinionated people. So it was, it was quite the deal. I was sorry I was part of, I was sorry I was there. Uh, uh, I, I couldn't get out. I was driving the damn truck. Wolf Train Services. Good day. My Volvo is gone. And I'm going to be picking up my new 3406 B Freightliner. And then I'm headed to Ottawa. God, <laughs> congratulations on the on the new truck and, and the engine and stuff. Are you sure Ottawa is, is where you want to go? Um Scott Kuhn, I put my faith in super singles, been running for years, and worked for FedEx Ground. So, and Scott, you, no trouble? You, you'd do it again with the super singles? That's, that's interesting. 
Shannon's a statue of limitations. Yeah, Shannon, I we'd probably be both all right with the statue of limitations now. But uh, SoCal, I'd love to comment on that, but I can't comment because you're right. Uh, it's, it's it's that to the would that would be correct it's to the point of ridiculous what are your thoughts on buying an older truck pre 2007 versus a newer one brian if you're handy with a with a set of wrenches i i'd go the older truck and the pre-emission engine all day long uh, god who was i talking i was talking to a guy the just the other day that had uh a, a packer engine that was only a couple years old nothing but trouble Nothing but trouble. Well, I got a pin for okay, Kathy's laughing at something here. I'm about to see what it says. Uh, I can't, I don't have it yet. Taking our 2021 driver of the year for a private aircraft flight around the Chicago skyline ne next month. Should be a good time. Cool. Gee, that's G for GP Transco. That's what they're doing with their 2021 driver of the year. That is neat. That is neat. And Chicago's got a really cool skyline, too. And over the lake. That is cool. What a what a nice thing to do. I don't. The grilled, grilled mornel. The only thing worse than blowing a super single is blowing a steer tire. I've done that. I've done that twice. And that was that was back in the day when the tires weren't as good as they are now, but in neither case was that was that fun. And I don't know if you guys know British Columbia particularly well, but when I blew my second, when it happened to me the second time, I was headed west, going down Field Hill in the mountains of British Columbia, and I blew my passenger side steering axle tire, and and the the edge would be maybe twenty feet away from me on the right hand side I blew my passenger side steering axle tire now there's a guard rail well there are guard wires not a rail but guard wires there and I managed to to keep it out out of the guard wires but it scared the living bejesus out of me and I wasn't going that fast because I was headed downhill with a set of B trains loaded up so I was probably only doing 25 30 miles an hour I sure was glad I wasn't doing 65 or 75 miles an hour <laughs> Kathy just never seen my my vision on color. That's from the Lettuce King. I can't even remember there. At, that was so far back, Lettuce King. Were you were you arguing for the green back then? That was twenty six years ago. Twenty six years ago, Kathy said that that argument took place. I remember stopping at uh, God. Was it the seventy six in Omaha? And and dinner was pretty quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and Kathy said she she chased him across the parking lot. <laughs> uh, I would have run too. I have run in the past. Uh, Let us king. Kathy just never seen my vision on color. Yeah, that's yeah. I guess that's that's what it was. <laughs> you know, I was I was thinking there the other day too, talking about back in the day. There, there were a lot of guys that would really dress up the inside of their trucks, the interior of their trucks. Lettuce King still does it. In fact, I phoned him today about, about some custom shifter knobs that he had made. But, but guys would just go all out on the, on the interiors, too, like Lettuce King has done with this truck. But you don't see that so much anymore, or hardly at all. And I guess, I guess it's because the new trucks really don't lend themselves to that. Like the, the steering wheels... Or probably something you shouldn't be messing with in the new ones and that type of thing you don't have toggle switches on the on the dash anymore but man back in the day some of the interiors were just as nice as the exteriors renee uh, dominguez i hope i'm saying that right coming in with a ten dollar donation thank you very much for that hope you're enjoying the stream today dominguez thank you renee thank you very much appreciate it <laughs> Uh, Dave, your thoughts on the Duel movie? I thought that was a great movie, and just a little bit of history. That was the that was the first movie that Steven Spielberg ever directed, and uh, I thought I thought that was a great movie. That was actually a 
um, got a 281 that they added an axle to to turn it into a 351. And then they actually ended up driving that truck off the cliff, off the cliff, just just for that clip, that that part of the movie. But cool movie. I was never a big fan of Dennis Weaver's, but I liked the movie. <laughs> let, us, let us King responding to my my uh, comment about not fixing up the new trucks inside. He says you can't chrome up Tupperware. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of plastic in the new trucks. Uh. He's ready for the upcoming video. Uh. Shannon says, brave or stupid? I'd get into an argument with 15 guys my size before I'd argue with Kathy. Right. <laughs> Kathy says, you got that right, Shannon. Uh. So, we're, are, are you... Are you pumped about the the interview tomorrow there, Lettuce King? I got some hooded sweatshirts made up. Would you guys each like one? I'll e email if you do. Uh -huh. I think you could use our I would I I would love one. I would love one, Ryan. We all would. Thank you. Thank you. That'd be great. Dave takes a, a, a size medium. Extra large. I take an extra large. Don't listen to her. Uh GP Transco talking to Trucker Herald about automatics. Automatics have gotten extremely good in the past five years. And with the fuel they save fleets order them almost exclusively now. And I noticed both Packer and um, oh man Eaton have both come out lately with the latest new automatic transmission. So it'll be curious to see how they perform. But they're they're perfecting those automatics all the time. So I'm I'm kinda looking forward to hearing the reviews on their on both of them coming up with the latest, greatest new things. So I, I think I, I think it's going to be the way of the future. I, I think there'll come a time when you don't see anything but. And, and not only because they're, they save fuel, but they, they're a lot easier to drive for new drivers and stuff like that. Huh. How's that N14 compared to the, to the big cams for uh, miles per gallon? The N14 were big cams. There was a big cam one, two, and three. They were, you know, they were like all the old engines. They, um, you know, they they would do all right if you nursed them along, but if you if you pushed them hard, they were brutal on fuel. We had three of those, I believe. I, th I, I was a, I was a I was a Cummins guy up until the I got so much harassment from the Lettuce King. I switched to Cats. I remember that that ninety three I had Lettuce King. That was that was a Cummins in that. What time is the interview tomorrow? It's whenever the Lettuce King gets home from his day job. Make it clear that it's not tomorrow. This is a recording. Oh, yeah. We're, Bo Cash, we're just, we're just recording the interview tomorrow. We, we're not going to be airing it until a later date. Huh. Daniel Meredith, out to make me hungry. I was doing, when I was OTR, I put a roast in a crock pot with potatoes and carrots, and having the smell was amazing while driving. My my problem is I I wouldn't have the patience. I'd be pulling over and eating as soon as I got a chance. I yeah maybe that too. But Brandon Hurst, I never like super singles all over the road because of the tires always riding back and forth in the canyons. The duels had cut into the roads. Yeah, I can I can see what he's saying too. And you know the 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 ruts in the road from the from the duels create gaps or tracks and that would throw super singles around. Wait, what's the Lettuce King's day job? The Lettuce King hauls oversized construction equipment around Toronto for huge money through the daytime. That's what that's what he's doing right now. When it calls for nerves of steel, you call on the Lettuce King. 
<laughs> Kathy's Kathy's questioning that, but uh, uh, yeah, Trucker Harold says automatics make life so much easier, especially in LA traffic. I can see that too, because when you get stuck in traffic, if it's a long one, man, you could damn near wear out your clutch leg. I didn't I didn't care for that. <laughs> so now is he the Hall King? No, he's he's always gonna be the lettuce king. Always gonna be the lettuce king. Haha. <laughs> Josh he's Josh he's gonna he's gonna pick the D D thirteen. Cummins four forty four was a was a smoke thrower. Yeah, it was. And you know, there you got guys that just love those four forty fours and then you got guys that just hated them, had bad experiences. And and Cummins didn't put that motor out very long. They only they only ran the four forty fours a, a few years and uh got away from them for some reason. Huh. <laughs> Daniel says that roast was a lot better than the than the hot dog rollers or any diner in the truck stops. GP Transco says trucker Harold manual truck transmission in Chicago equals pain and suffering. Yeah, Chicago's got some some nasty traffic. It used to be it used to be you could slip in there at night and out, but it's it's kind of like Toronto now. There's like traffic 24/7. A lot of the big cities are getting that way. The world's a busy place anymore. Josh Bulldog, how many new Peterbilt 389s are eaten full or automatic, automated? Josh, I read the other day that 80% of the Peets coming out of Denton now are automatic. And I would assume they'd be, well, Packer, Packer just made their own automatic transmissions here lately too. So it's, it's tough to say how many of them were eaten. But something like 80% of the new trucks coming out are automatic. Out of, out of Denton, Peterbilt. <laughs> my 3406 will eat my new Cummins for breakfast. Well, have you got a, you got a Cummins in the, in the work truck? I probably knew that. I just forgotten. That's the Lettuce King. <laughs> Cummins 400 was good for sunscreen on a cold start. <laughs> you know, you know what I miss though. The the um, the Cumminses, the KTAs, and the old big cams, and even the small cams. When you start them, when they were really cold in the morning, they had a lope to them, and they'd sit there and lope and surge and lope and surge when they were really really cold. And I believe it or not, I missed that. I thought uh, that was kind of the the sound of trucks when I was younger. I like that sound. They don't do that now with the electronic timing and all of that. SoCal. Only time I ever got into Chicago in the wee hours of the morning was to get out before that starts. Yeah, I ever go to Chicago is in the wee hours of the morning and get out before it starts. Yeah, yeah. I used to I used to haul air freight in there briefly, and I try to try to get in and out of O'Hare before the traffic hit. But sometimes I made it, and sometimes I was sitting there till at night till the traffic died down again, depending on the load. All right, chat. Well, it's about that time of day where we start wrapping things up for this week. Um, if you have any thoughts you want to share from today's stream, Dave, or any announcements coming up for the rest of the week, any uploads, that sort of stuff, uh, now would be the time to inform our viewers. Okay, well, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything right now, but I do want to say that uh, somebody said they'd choose Chicago traffic over Atlanta, and I would agree wholeheartedly with that. I don't think so. We've had a we've had a good chat today. I'm glad the Lettuce King was able to join us. It's always entertaining when he's here. I we've got a video Friday, but for the life of me, I can't remember what it's about. But be sure to tune in Friday because it'll be good, whatever it is. So thank you all for joining us today, Shannon. Again, I want to thank you for sending us the those little clips on that guy. I'd never heard or seen him before, but he was hilarious. So Shannon, thank you for that. Uh, anything else, boys and girls? Are we good? I think we're all caught up. Thank you for joining us. GP Transco, glad to see you here. We got another comment from the 
asking oh, what, oh. glad that you're on the job Nick a late a late coming comment from the lettuce king glad you're on the job glad you're on the job Nick so, am I. so are we we wouldn't be we wouldn't be here live if it weren't for Nick not with my skills take care keep the rubber side down stay safe we'll see you on the back off good night everybody <laughs>